sort of jump into future gazing, right? I know we we had a poll question earlier about where you really would like to see more guidance or what you think would be a really meaningful um, step forward for the regulatory paradigms for these products within the next year or two, right? Um, so I'm curious, you know, I'd like to start Oriana with you. Are there particular topics or a topic that over the next year or so you'd really, it would make your life and your company's life easier if you got some, some answers or it, it, that you could see the regulators addressing more regularly or clarifying in the immediate future? What, what area might that be? And then we'll go to you and, and Melanie to, to close us out. Um, absolutely. Um, and I think this, I can just kind of transition the word yeah. platform, right? It's a, yeah. one of those topics where I would love to see the agency um, clarify all of their language um, around mm -hmm. the different things um, because mm -hmm. you get excited about different areas and um, to have a yeah. word come and go and it can get confusing. Um, but, you know, to that uh, guidance that Melanie was just referring to and having a continuous process and something that's novel, that's one of the things that excites me at Nutcracker and having mm -hmm. our Nutcracker manufacturing unit, which mm -hmm. is that novel process of how do you yeah. do this in a different way? How do you do this in a way that is scalable um, and is currently, you know, targeting very specific patient populations, but can also be scaled to um, be a pandemic preparedness platform, right? Um, so I would love to see the agency provide more guidance about manufacturing platforms um, and okay. how they would respond to that novelty. Um, I think that yeah. would be you know, really helpful in allowing yeah. us to focus on bringing these therapeutics quickly through the development yeah. process um, and then mm -hmm. also launching them. So um, I think there could be more work done um, as we continue to um, educate the agencies about what we're doing and what we've discovered and what we've engineered. Um, and then yep. also as they're taking into consideration um, the results and the data, the safety profiles that are coming back mm -hmm. um, from these mRNA therapeutics um, that are entering and have been in the, um, in the system for a while now. So the longer things are there, the more data you yeah. are able to generate, right? So I would envision yeah. um, there's going to be more guidance around safety and efficacy um, and things of that nature uh, as yeah. we move forward um, with all of these Wonderful. different realities. So this is exciting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, any, any closing thoughts here? Anything that you really are burning to see yeah. <laughs> the next year or so. Uh, uh, actually, there's two things on my wish list. Uh, one is yes. that you know, self-amplified RNA is still considered a GMO in Australia, you know. So yeah, mm. it, we all know scientifically it's not, but because of legislation is there, you know. So okay. yeah, I hope there's some upcoming changes and that will definitely help accelerate the development there. Yeah. So um, awesome. another why is that, you know, it's a platform of prior knowledge, you know, definitely mm -hmm. you know, RNA technology is a, you know, people call plug and play, you know, you can change the mm -hmm. encoding sequence, then, you know, have without changing the manufacture or control, you know, so, and how we can leverage those prior knowledge and accelerate the development for next vaccines or other therapeutics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Melanie, you were at the top of the hour. What do you got for us? <laughs> what else can yeah. we advance? So, well, I, you know, I have to say, I, I, I do think, you know, I do think, um, yeah, it's nice to have more regulatory documents. And I definitely agree with your specific thing about the GMO in Australia. That's such a weird thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I have to say, you know, <laughs> going back to what you, you said in the beginning, and Oriana echoed this, is um, a lot of times we like to get our answers from guidance documents because it's mm -hmm. easy and, like, it fulfills our need to put something in a box. But yeah. the agency, all, all the agencies across the health authorities, like that's the best way to kind of help build your strategy is with those early interactions to say, this is how I'm thinking about it. This is how I want to do it. And maybe you do have some constraints where you can't do everything at once or you haven't figured out how to do everything at once. Those are yeah. the best ways to figure out your path forward is through those early interactions, just mm. kind of laying out a good scientific plan of how to do things. Because I get, I think sometimes when we have guidance documents, we also take them as like, it has to be this way. 
and it, gospel. it doesn't like it's it, mm -hmm. especially if it's not 100 percent applicable you have to kind of use your thinking to say how do i extrapolate this scenario and risk to my particular situation and come up with the best mm -hmm. solution so um, yeah. i echo what yeah. you said originally which is early early interaction